This didactic material is meant for the personal use of the student only and is copyrighted. Its reproduction, even for a partial utilization, is strictly forbidden in compliance with and in force of the law on the author's rights. Uh, hello, my name is Paolo De Paoli and I'm a researcher. I teach at university level and I'm a consultant to private and public enterprises. Um, I, the, this is the third uh, lesson of a course that's titled uh, Leadership and Change Management. And uh, today's lesson concerns styles and approaches in leading and managing change. However, we are entering two cases. We are going from theory on into practice. Uh, the two cases will be approached now from the point of view of top management. Let's see the uh, topics that will be uh, addressed in the course. Uh, the first topic is critical aspects which induce change in the information systems industry at the organizational level. The second topic is describe the history and characteristics of two information system companies and their needs to change. The third is compare, describe the kinds of leaderships and management that were present in the two companies before the change took place. The objectives. The objectives of the lessons are to focus on the relationship between the environment and the needs to change, to understand how gaps in leadership are developed, to realize how top management seeks to initiate change. Um, so these are the topics and the objectives. We move from the theoretical aspects that we saw in the first two lessons and we are getting into the world of practice. The world of practice means that we are moving in an environment that can be described in um, as uh, we said the other time, in very turbulent times. These turbulent times uh, need to handle discontinuities. Uh, the first is heterogeneity. Heterogeneity means that there are a lot of different things that are uh, to be managed. Many different things coming at different times and one doesn't really know how uh, things are going to be handled properly. It is uncertain the way we can handle a number of very different things. The third is distance. There is distance that can be handled uh, uh, with difficulty because the number of information and communication technologies are not so well known they are getting more distributed, but still distance is something that has to be overcome. The uh, fourth is, of course, innovation. Innovation which basically uh, concerns uh, financial aspects, but also the most important uh, for any kind of industry, and it's been taking place for the last 20 years, is, of course, information and communication technologies, which actually is the industry of the two cases that we are uh, considering. It's a runaway world. This runaway world means that all what we are used to is not going to uh, any longer, is not going to be uh, familiar any longer. It's a world that we know today and maybe in, in a few weeks will be completely different. This, of course, means that all industries need change. The ICT world is no exception. So this is the scenario where all enterprises have to work. And uh, of course, where uh, also ICT companies are involved. Now, ICT companies have um, to face, have to face a number of uh, competitors, a number of uh, strong competitors. And uh, they have been uh, uh, inventing, developing uh, systems that not always have been uh, uh, properly used. And they have developed a number of systems that actually are based one upon the other. They are interconnected. 
and uh, their interconnection creates um, a number of problems. They are so interconnected that someone, as we can see in the next slide, has uh, described an, uh, some information system problems, which we can summarize this way. Software criticality and dependability. This critical situation will likely continue until a major software-induced systems catastrophe similar in impact on world consciousness to the 9-11 World Trade Center catastrophe stimulates action toward establishing accountability for software dependability. Given the high and increasing software vulnerabilities of the world's current financial, transportation, communication, energy distribution, medical and emergency services infrastructures, it is highly likely that such a software induced catastrophe will occur will occur between now and 2025. Now, who is uh, saying this is BIM? Who, who was one of the most uh, renowned and uh, famous uh, software developers in, in the world, designers, and invented the methodologies that, are, uh, that are, uh, are followed even today. Now, this problem of, uh, uh, of having this uh, uh, interconnected systems has uh, pushed uh, firms, information systems firm, to become uh, more and more um, strict in the use of sequential kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, processes in uh, very strongly knitted uh, plans, which uh, cannot be really followed always, because as they are sometimes huge projects, uh, these projects take a long time so that take a long time to be implemented. So by the time that you get at the end of this project, uh, the things that you started with are not actually the ones you are coming out with, you're, ca you, you, you're going to get. Um, so that um, in the end, um, some uh, researchers have started to think that probably the way out is to try to come to terms with the fact that you cannot have a, uh, a neat uh, design uh, information system process and be able to respect the in the details uh, all along its, uh, its history. So it's better to come to terms with something that's improvisation. And we see now the next slide. Looking that is for possible solutions. Either we do what management science suggests, that is idealize, or we keep on putting into brackets what we believe we know about strategy, structure, markets, feedback mechanisms, stage curves, and so on, and reflect upon what we observe. We accept coexistence with the messiness of the worldly routines and surprises without panicking. So this is uh, something that was uh, written by Sibora, which was a researcher that actually studied the problems that come out with a a sequential kind of approach to, um, to the development of information uh, systems. Um, this, is the, um, this is the scenario and uh, we can uh, uh, describe now uh, the leading and managing change, the two cases. Now we have two cases, case one is the banking information system outsource uh, which is called BIO as an acronym in case, changing the business model by innovating human resources management. Its focus of change is to improve customer management throughout the company and knowledge acquisition and transfer. This case concerned, uh, uh, the second case, concerns the design and implementation of the competence centers of the finance division of a large Italian software company. These two case studies are described in uh, De Paoli, Datri and De Marco in an article which I am co-authored and I'm the first author, uh, Innovation Information System Managed by, by Enhancing Knowledge Intensive Service Activities, the study of two cases in the banking sector. This uh, work has been published in the uh, uh, International Journal of Networking and Virtual Organizations in 2011. Um, if you, uh, in, the, in the slide there was the BIO, which is the acronym that I pointed here that I'm using 
further on on the slides in order to show who, uh, which firm is uh, concerned with that particular topic. We can, we, can, uh, we can see it immediately, we can see that immediately. Now the case one, banking information service outsourcer. What was the situation of the firm? BIO was established in 1991, 10 local Italian banks, uh, application and facility management, running applications by keeping anomalies and costs at the minimum. In 1999, both anomalies and costs were higher than expected, relationship with vendors was difficult. Uh, client owners decided that a thorough change was needed, they wanted quality to improve and costs to be reduced. They would invest to better quality so that new clients could be acquired. The business model was to evolve from net sourcing to enterprise partnership, points of strength, specific domain expertise, plus extra control and attention from local suppliers. And uh, what I want to underscore is that um, this firm started because 10 Italian local banks wanted to concentrate on their uh, main business, on their core business. And they, and in such a costly activity and in continuous uh, evolution, like information system, would be better run if they created a common structure uh, to which they could outsource their services. So that's why they started this company. Uh, so the, what happened is that after eight or nine years, what they expected, that is to keep costs under control and to have a good quality in service, uh, was not actually what uh, came through. Uh, and then the outsourcing, uh, the, the, the outsourcers, this uh, uh, BIO, um, this, this company was actually not developing software on its own, was actually, was, uh, uh, buying the software from vendors. So one of the tasks was to have to manage the relationship with these vendors in order to find the best application that would suit the needs of, uh, of all, the, of all the, the banks that were using their, uh, their company for their outsourcing uh, uh, services. Um, so the relationship with vendors uh, became difficult. Um, decided that, uh, the, the owners decided that they probably they were too few uh, to have to keep costs under control. They needed to uh, broaden their market so they had to change their, their business model. Net sourcing means that you are s uh, servicing only uh, the companies, the banks that are part, that are members, but uh, they wanted to develop that model and have a transition onto an enterprise partnership, which means that you don't only uh, uh, outsource to the banks that are members, but also to other clients, to other uh, banks that you would find on the market. Of course, that would mean that you have to compete with other outsourcers, and therefore your, your quality standards would have to be improved. So this is the, the first case that we are going to consider. You can see that uh, in eight years, from 1991 to 1999, um, the owners and the top managers saw that the results were not the ones that they expected that that, of course, uh, started change. Now we're going into the um, uh, the, the second case, which is uh, financial information system vendor and the strengths we are going to see in this slide. The financial division of a large Italian software house was launched in 1991 to conquer an emerging market connected to a deep change in regulations in the banking industry that would bear significant consequences on the financial services business. By the year 2000, it became the fastest growing division in the company with a 60% share in the Italian market. It develops its own product line of integrated subsystems. The core product used the Unix as operating system and Oracle database to provide solutions 
customized and delivered through project work for banks in trading and portfolio management. As a result of the specificity of the business and of the success obtained, the uh, financial division of this large software company was independent of, two co of corporate functions in choosing its own ways to organize promotion, projects, and human resources management. Most of the 200 employees were engaged in the project management and product management units. Now, this strength show that in 1991, just to say the changes in, in, in environment, uh, this regulation in, in Italy changed, and so as the regulation changed, the, uh, the entrepreneur uh, that actually entered the, this large uh, software house uh, with something like 2,000 employees said that there was the opportunity to uh, get into the market of the um, um, you see, in, uh, for the um, for, in, for the trading of banks, this was the the opportunity. Now, what what he managed to do is that from 1991 on 2000, he came to get 60 percent of the market share in Italy. Uh, actually, 60 percent of the banks were referring to. To, to this, uh, to the financial division of this large company, in order to get their uh, their information systems to handle their financial aspects and their portfolio management, uh, as this uh, person that initiated this division was very uh, was a very visionary and strong personality. He had a very strong and visionary personality, and uh, of course the results that he brought home were, uh, of course, satisfactory. What happened was that he could gain, uh, together with his own division, a great independence. So he could have his own, um, the division could have its own uh, uh, strategic plan, it could hire resources. Uh, of course, there was a central uh, department for human resources, but they actually had their own independent policy. Oh, one interesting thing is that they didn't have any human resources department at the, the, at the division level. So they actually had empowered all the middle managers to handle uh, the people that were uh, working with them. And only hiring the, the formal procedure would be handled by the corporation, by the uh, by the by the central company, the division actually had the the recruitment uh, with the choosing the, uh, the 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 more apt individuals was actually a task that was performed by the division itself. Um, these were the points of strength, but then there were also some weaknesses, and the weaknesses uh, were that. Uh, the, the main top management concern from the, 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 the entrepreneur, the head of the division that started the division, and the three or four uh, basic uh, uh, um, entrepreneurs that were the owners of the larger company. Now, the financial services market would probably not keep growing at the current pace. Exploring new opportunities on other European market, uh, markets was necessary. Third, the maintenance of the core product was becoming increasingly complex. Fourth, the training unit was running on its own, not really integrated with the rest of the division. Strategic development unit staff were deeply involved in project management. Research and development unit staff were involved in maintaining the core product. Now, what comments do, can we make on these weaknesses is that actually nothing wrong was happening at the moment. Um, nothing wrong happened, but it, it, the concerns were, were, came about when looking at the future. Looking at the future is the first topic. Yeah? The financial services would probably not keep growing at the current pace. Okay, we have 60% market share. Uh, uh, this need came onto the market uh, recently, but are we going to uh, keep this, uh, this uh, market share? Or are we going to, as we're having such a high market share 
and uh, we're actually very good in quality. Are we going to stay on in Italy or are we going to try to find new opportunities abroad? For example, uh, in, in that period when they finally decided to start the change, uh, they entered the, the French market uh, rather successfully. Maintenance of the core product was becoming increasingly complex. The training unit was running on its own. In fact, what they were doing was traditional courses when they had a new entrance in the division, which I uh, remind you there was 200 people, they would actually run traditional courses where you had class, front teaching, there was not any kind of uh, learning on the job, um, or that, that is, it, it was, but it was not integrated with classroom work. So that you had formal courses and then training on the job that was handled by the different uh, project managers. Mm, and, and, and it was detached. Now the other thing is that there was this, the, there is this unit, this strategic development unit, uh, which is, was in staff of, uh, to, the, uh, to the head, to the CEO of the division, which actually was the entrepreneur. What was its use? It's called strategic development unit because when this, uh, the entrepreneur, the CEO, would uh, find a new bank that was going to be interested in, its, in, the, in the product they would, uh, that they offered, then he would call on this uh, unit, which was ma made up of the best experts uh, in the division, and they would go as a task force to show all the points of strength of their products, of their application. And uh, in fact, uh, when uh, these big clients ob obviously uh, were, uh, had the presentation from this group of people uh, that were meant only to do the general design of the, of, the, of, of the application of the information system that would then be developed, then they would ask for them to stay in and actually run the project themselves. And, uh, and this, of course, took away time from their uh, tasks and put it strongly on uh, and it took away uh, time for the development of new business because they were actually doing project management. The research and development unit staff which actually was developing uh, new applications within the core product uh, in the end actually were just involved in maintaining the core product so no real innovation was taking place. So this, um, this kind of situation had to come to a, uh, to a, to, um, had to be, had to be um, reorganized. Now let's go back uh, in the uh, following slides. We are going to uh, place the uh, two cases, the two companies, the outsourcer, and uh, financial division, we're going to see how they were positioned with respect to some concepts that we presented in the two previous lessons. Um, and we had different types of leadership. One was transactional leadership, the other one was transformational leadership. Let's see how they did before they started the change. So how were they positioned? Uh, transactional leadership, I remember that transactional leadership occurs when one person takes the initiative in making contact with others for the purpose of an exchange of something valued. Now, uh, transactional leadership behaviors, if you recall, are contingent reward, management by exception active and passive, or less affair. Now we see that BIO, which is the outsourcer, uh, is positioned at the contingent reward part or on the less affair, uh, whereas the, uh, the financial division is on management by exception active. What does that, uh, what does that mean? It means exactly what the problems were in the, in the outsourcer. That is, uh, uh, bio 
was actually just handling what was happening day by day. They didn't have actually any leadership. So they either had exchanges, I pay you this amount of money and you, and you do the work you're expected to do uh, without, any, uh, without looking forward on to developing uh, people that were working in the division, or laissez-faire, which it was uh, uh, the avoidance of, of uh, uh, leadership responsibilities. So this is one possible explanation of why in eight years this company did not improve and did not meet the expectation of the owners when they made their investments. Uh, they, in transactional leadership behaviors, they were very weak. In, uh, in this kind of uh, uh, behaviors, uh, transactional behavior, instead, the financial division had a management by exception and was the, uh, however, the, the passive part. Passive part, if you recall, means that uh, is a corrective action is taken by, uh, by leaders only when it's really necessary, when some serious problem occurs, because uh, training and behavior of people were actually um, um, rather well oiled, the, the functioning and leadership was rather smooth. Was transformational leadership present in bio and uh, financial division? Well, uh, transformational leadership is based on more than compliance of followers. It follows shifts uh, in the beliefs, the needs, and the values of followers. Well, we can say that uh, bio was not present in this kind of, uh, of, uh, of leadership where instead uh, the financial division was indeed present and uh, was actually doing, uh, was actually had leaders, transformational leaders. And we can see this and if we consider the behaviors of by all of the, of the, of the outsourcers and of the financial division. Uh, by all was not present at all. That's why we have it here on the slide. Whereas of the four uh, items that uh, identify a transformational leader, idealized influence, inspirational motivation, intellectual stimulation, individual consideration, uh, they were strong on intellectual stimulation, which again refers to leader who challenge organizational norms, encourage divergent thinking, and who push followers to develop innovative strategies. In fact, the, uh, the, the, the financial division had grown because the leader was a great intellectual stimulator of, his, of all, uh, of his uh, closer uh, followers, and of course, along all, all, the, uh, all along the, the whole uh, uh, division with all people. So intellectual stimulation was a characteristic that was present uh, that far, but whereas in the other case, transformational leadership had never been present in, uh, in, uh, in that company, in the outsourcer. Now, we have in this slide, we see the possible personality traits in BIO and uh, FD leaders. We can see in this slide that of the four items that, uh, that, that, that uh, the five items, the big five considered by psychologists to be the structure, uh, to form the structure of a personality, that is extraversion, neuroticism, openness to experience agreeableness and conscientiousness. Once again, uh, BIO, the, its leaders were, their personality traits were based on conscientiousness on this one, but they hadn't any, uh, their personality was, were not that open to experience or they were not extrovert, where instead the, uh, in the other, in the financial division, that was actually what was the, uh, one of the points, uh, one of the points of strength. But um, how was this uh, found out? 
because uh, it, 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 an assessment center was, uh, was carried out and it came out that the from middle manager and top manager had this kind of, of profile. Uh, what about distributed leadership? Now, we know that distributed leadership is probably best conceived as a group quality, as a set of functions which must be carried out by the group. Um, once again, uh, we have a, uh, the presence on this distributed leadership by the, in the financial division, whereas uh, BIO, the outsourcer, is not present. They just had a relationship, an individual, a two individual relationship that is uh, supervisor or leader to subordinate or, or follower and that was it. There, uh, there was not crisscrossing of uh, the groups that were working in, the, in, the, in that company so that uh, this kind of distributed leadership that we have seen that is very useful especially in times of change, in times of innovation was actually not performed in one of the two companies and that probably explains why, wh why this company, uh, the outsourcer, was not, did not advance in the, in the, in the process in the, in, 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 towards the objectives that were uh, given at the beginning of the, uh, of, at the beginning of 1991 and, and that's why instead in the same period of time they were able to proceed quite a lot. But let's, let's see uh, uh, positioning leadership and management in the two, in the two cases. Uh, uh, in lesson number one, uh, we uh, positioned, we said that there is a relationship between management and leadership. So management is efficiency in climbing the ladder of success. Leadership determines whether the ladder is leaning against the right wall. So how were the two of them positioned? Well, the first one, the outsourcer, was actually based on management efficiency. The second one was actually very strong on leadership. That is to determine whether the ladder was leaning on the right wall, where they are addressing in the proper way the market, if they were uh, doing the right thing uh, in the sense of orientating their marketing efforts and, uh, and uh, addressing the clients or the customers in a proper way. Whereas is that the, uh, the, the, the outsourcers were, were concerned only with manager efficiency and in that they weren't even that good because we've seen before that costs were rising and, uh, and they did not have a, uh, um, a good relationship with vendors and of course as they didn't develop software within, uh, they didn't themselves develop software, if you have a bad relationship with the, with the vendors then of course then you, have, you always have to renegotiate whatever the services they are um, they're offering to you and, and that of course raises costs, raises time in which you are supposed to develop the applications and of course banks are not satisfied, that increases turbulence and so efficiency in this case is related as well to effectiveness and that was one of the, of the problems. But let's see now um, the Let's see now a little bit more in detail the, um, the differences in uh, uh, leadership and in management of the, two, of the two companies. Positioning leadership and management in, uh, in the outsourcers, BIO, and in the financial division. Now, leaders, uh, we take a few of these items that are more significant. Leaders are change agents for the financial division. Leaders get organization and people to change. 
And uh, managers plan, budget, evaluate and facilitate. This is the position of BIO. These are the characteristics of the financial division. So you see, once again, the uh, financial division is present in the leader as change agents. They had leaders as uh, to get organization people to change. So they did that. And whereas uh, the outsourcers had only uh, managers that would plan, budget, and evaluate and facilitate, but even at that they were not that good. Let's see, oh, on this one we have two significant items. One, again on leadership, is a characteristic of the financial division. So leaders have broad perspectives enabling them to peer into the future to determine needs and what changes need to be made for growth and survival. On the other side, we have, we have managers, as we said before, on the outsources that are guided by the myopic drive to handle routine in order to produce efficiently. And they were not that good at that either. So you're starting to see that in manager and leadership, these two, uh, uh, the two companies were quite different. On the next, we have uh, three characteristics concerning the um, the financial division. Their, its leaders, where leaders produce the potential for dramatic change, chaos, and even failure. Uh, on this other side, managers, their planners are planners who have concerns about process. Managers are eager to solve the problems. So they had this kind of leaders and this kind of managers. Whereas, instead, uh, the outsources, the other company, had only managers that have inter impersonal, if not passive, attitudes toward goals. So, this is another, it gives you another hint on the difference of the two, uh, of the two situations. On uh, this other list, we have uh, the financial division, which is here. Leaders are concerned with ideas and relate to people in more intuitive and empathetic ways. And also managers on the other side, which, who relate to people according to the role they play in a sequence of, event, of events or in a decision-making process. So, the next list, you still have the second company, the financial division, which has leaders that develop their subordinates, their followers. And uh, managers that maintained or maintain the everyday work. So they have, uh, they, they, it's another point of strength. So if we want to have a general positioning uh, of leaders and managers uh, in, the, in the two companies, we can see that as change agents, Bio is on a very low level. But it is not, it doesn't rank high either on administrators. It's not even at the average level. Whereas the financial division 
ranks rather high, six as a change agent, even though it's lower as an administrator, even though it's still on a four, that is on a on an average uh, on an average level. Um, The other question is, were, were the two companies used to plan organizational change? I, I, I uh, recall that organizational, planned organizational change is the process used by organization to modify their present situation into a future one in order to increase their effectiveness. The purpose of this process is to find new methods to employ resources and competencies to increase the ability of the organization to create value for the shareholders and the stakeholders. Well, uh, the outsourcers tried uh, the, fi uh, the financial division had never thought it was necessary. Now, let's stop a bit on this. Why, why do I say that the, the, they tried? Uh, that uh, the outsourcers be or tried because they they called consultants before and they asked them to develop a, a for, uh, an evaluation system for performance for the human resources only that uh, it, it mm, they tried it for three years and at the end of these three years uh, either because training had not been enough uh, or uh, because probably the support from top management was not enough either. It actually uh, did not uh, produce any uh, results. Uh, well, the, feder the, 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 the the division, the financial division, um, never thought it was necessary. They were so involved in change that they couldn't worry about whether they were going to stabilize it. So. What were the drivers of change for the two companies? In the first case, we have as competitive, uh, as a, as a competitive drivers for both uh, the outsourcers and the financial division. But the, uh, the driver for the financial division was also the economic, political and global assets because they wanted to develop further and they wanted to go abroad. So the, um, the, 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 what was going on in the domestic market was important and they wanted to go further, further up. Um, the main areas that they wanted to involve in change, well, uh, top managers said that they, would, they understood that they had to uh, change their human resources attitude. Uh, not only across the board, but also in um, when they uh, when they thought that they needed um, the the owners thought that they needed a new chief executive officer and it's and a, and a deputy. Um, financial division also thought that this that human resources were critical, and uh, they decided to go on to a project that would uh, increase the, con uh, the competencies of the people. None of the two thought that they would use technology and organization, with the exception of BIO, which decided to put in place a knowledge management system and a new performance management system. So actually it impacted on the organization as well. Now, preceding change attempts, causes and, and strategies. Um, if we look at this, uh, at, this um, at this slide and we look on causes of the res resistance before the new project, that is in the past, or BIO, the, the, the outsourcers, had inertia as one of the causes of resistance and also poor training. 
They had standard training and standard classes. They didn't have um, much training on the job. And as causes of resistance in on the financial division uh, were three. Actually, they didn't have any planned uh, any plan change because they had the fear of failure, of failure. That is, we have been going all along thus far so well, why would we need to go and change the way we are doing business? Why would we want to go somewhere else that far? So up to that point they didn't want to change because they were afraid that failure would come in. The other one was of course, fear of poor outcome. We are going to be involved in a change process which probably will not improve things that much. And then, uh, faults of change. That is, they had tried to launch uh, a, um, precedingly, another competence center, but then it was not very innovative in kind. That is, once again, they had traditional courses when people joined the financial division they would take standard courses for entrance. They didn't have any management courses uh, it's so that the, 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 the actually the, the center, the training center which was a training center was actually off, uh, away from or detached from the, the operations it's, and therefore was rather uh, was poor. In its, in, it was not at the same level as the performance of the overall division. Now, what, what did they try to do? So, they tried to go on education, that is, okay, we tried, uh, as they have inertia uh, uh, and poor training, they tried in the past to go on education, but they didn't have any results. Um, they try to negotiate with different uh, people um, and say, well, if you want, I'll give you more responsibilities and uh, then probably you will take more care of the people and you do your job better. But that didn't either get any results. Um, Typical of a, of an attitude based on uh, based on uh, on a leadership that's transformational, the f uh, financial division went strongly on discussions. They engaged in discussions throughout the division, from the top to the bottom. All were involved. So the strategy was based basically the past strategy was basically on discussion. Now, neither Bio nor uh, neither the outsourcers nor the financial division ever tried action research. I'll recall it uh, uh, one in, in one moment. You have five phases in which in this one you analyze the state of the organization then you identify the future state that you want to achieve, then you implement the planned action, then you evaluate the action, and then finally you institutionalize this procedure so that the next time you have, uh, you need to change, you're ready for it. None of them had experience or tried action research. That is, they tried to uh, access change, but they did only or changes in certain areas without having a general look of how the, um, the organization was run. That is, they didn't think of, uh, of having a holistic view altogether. The concluding comments are that the two cases that we have considered in the two cases we have considered the relationship between the needs to change and the relevant drivers, uh, both in terms of environment and leadership. Uh, the second one is that the, the outsourcer's leadership had been based on transactional behaviors and was looking to move on to transformational ones. 
uh, financial division was looking to stabilize its knowledge and uh, managerial capabilities. Both companies decided, both companies decided to launch change management initiatives but lacked a holistic approach. So what now is uh, the, 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 the following lessons, we'll have to see uh, this situation through the lens of the consultant that had to take in charge, was uh, going to get in charge of uh, uh, studying and designing the, the, the project. Thank you for your attention.